Thank you so much for joining us on a brand new episode of 420 Grams. Um, uh, the last episode that you saw, we did a chat with FC Goa's new coach, Carlos Pena, who told us about his plans uh, and what he plans to do once he goes back, his second coming in Goa. Uh, this time around, we're getting to you another person who's in charge of Mumbai City FC and his team has done wonders uh, in the AFC Champions League. By far, one of the best performances you've seen uh, by an Indian team at the AFC level. Dempo. AFC Cup, I remember when they reached the semi-finals. Then there was, of course, Bengaluru reaching the AFC Cup finals. And now Mumbai City FC finishing second in their group. Uh, two wins, one draw, seven points. Mumbai City FC really exceeding expectations. And to talk to us about that, we're joined by the head coach of Mumbai City FC, Des Buckingham. Des, thank you so much uh, for taking our time for our show. My name is Arjun. Uh, alongside me is my bearded friend named Sudhan. Um, how have you been, Des? Uh, it feels, uh, how do I, how long have you been away from home? And how long are you enjoying it now, back home? Are you feeling like, oh, I have nothing to do. I have nothing to do. What do I do now? Is that, is that feeling weird? Uh, thank you for having me, firstly. Um, I've listened to a couple of your shows as well. While well, we've been away in Saudi, and they've been, they've been very good. So thank you for inviting me on. Um, and nice to finally meet the two of you. But yeah, to be home, um, I'm back in the UK at the moment, just spending some time with family. And uh, I think it was I arrived in to go or into our bio bubble in October of last year. So it's been a it's been a long time, um, but it's been a, it's been a good time, and it was a really nice way, like you said, to finish the way we did in Saudi before coming back and spending some time with the family. It's been a week now, Des. Uh, have you and you're away from that team environment, right? Once you're in the team environment, your brain works in a different way, right? Um, you're away from all of that. You're with family right now. Have you had time to reflect on what you and the boys did? In Saudi? Um, yes and no. I, th I think, um, you know, we, we left literally the day after, you know, the game The game kicked off at 11.15 at night. So we never actually got back to the hotel until 2.30 in the morning. And uh, we had people flying out from six in the morning the next day. So it was pretty chaotic. And it still, it still kind of is because you're, you're still picking pieces up and, and making sure you can get a good review of not just the, the ACL, but also the regular season. So, has it sunk in a little bit because of you know what we what we went on to achieve? I thought was a wonderful thing for for the club and for for Indian football. Um, but uh, the messages that I've certainly received, I'm still getting messages sent through both from within India and outside. Um, I think the the way that we went about what we did, people have really sort of sat up and, and taken note of that, and that was that was the pleasing thing for me. Uh, Des, uh, you know, pre-tournament, we heard a quote of yours, uh, Reddit, saying that you're going for that one win, which no team has done before. Um, now, one is you're keeping in mind what your team does, uh, your team's, uh, you know, what your team brings to the table. Was that you sort of dangling a carrot in front of him, this is your goal? Or the other being that if I put too much in front, saying we're going for two wins, we're going for seven points, we're going for trying to qualify in front of them, that would have probably been detrimental. Uh, to the boys saying you're putting too much on them and uh, thereby just that one win and then of course you progress after that everything's a lottery enjoy yourselves and have a good time yeah it's it's interesting because i mean the, the quote that i made was we want to go and be the first team to win a game at the champions league at no point did i say i just want to go and win one game uh, it was that our first target was can we win and i think we can go and win and if we do win one then we you know, we're not just there to to win one game. You know, we have ambitions as a group that we wanted to see what we could do. And the interesting thing was when you're trying to set targets to go into those types of tournaments, when you haven't got too much that's gone before you, it's very hard to to judge maybe where you should sit in that competition because, you know, it's only Goa that had gone before um, and they, they, they played wonderfully well and, and obviously got the three points from their games. But when you don't quite know, because we haven't yet had the time at this level over a period of time, where you, how should you get on? How well should you do? Um, I felt that we needed a carrot of sorts, and I felt a win was a realistic target for us. Yeah. Like I said, it was it wasn't it wasn't a case of we're going for one win. It was a case of we want to go and be the first team to win a game. And I said afterwards to the group, it was nice to get that, especially in the second game, because it gave us four more opportunities to then go and see what we could do, because we were into the unknown and um, we felt that we could actually go and do a little bit more. And, and I, I feel we went on to do that. Tell us a little bit about the mood when that win happened in the second game, Des. I mean, it must have sort of really sort of energised the whole group. It, it, it did. Um, it's, it's a, 
I can't quite describe it. I get tingles down my back with these types of moments because there are moments, you know, in football especially, you go through a lot of um, emotion on the sideline and there's a lot of work that goes in both for the players and the staff. So when you when you realise when the full-time whistle goes that um, that moment that has just happened and will now stay with us and stay with football in India for a long time, when you share those moments with the people that you've worked with so closely for seven months and hopefully then you know, the impact that it can go on to have, not just for the remaining four games, but for others to show that it can be done and it's more than capable to be done. Um, they're really special moments and they're, they're, they're few and far between in life and especially football. So really, really enjoyable, emotional um, celebrations on the, on the pitch afterwards. Uh, but we didn't, get too much, we didn't get too much time to, uh, to, to celebrate because <clears throat> we're in Saudi Arabia it was during Ramadan, and we had a game in two days. We had we had a game two days afterwards, so we had to quickly try and refocus the group. I know you had a game two days afterwards, so that means probably one training session, which is all about recovery and uh, just getting the team together. But did you sort of see a current come into the team after that win? Did you see a sort of a bounce? Because you're always looking at body language as a coach. You're looking at players, what the body language is. What was the body language in the build-up to the third game um, after that second game win? Yeah, I'd, I'd spoken to the group before we actually got to Saudi Arabia. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, when we actually we went to Abu Dhabi for two weeks and spent um, some time in a camp there after the ISL season to to prepare. And we had two really good games against two very good teams. And you know we were missing obviously missing Eagle, which gave us an opportunity to look at different ways that we may want to approach the uh, the games. Those two friendlies that we had prior to arriving to the Champions League, <clears throat> they played a major role, I think, in allowing the players to know that they could compete at that level because the players, the, obviously Al, um, the Alain game, there's some wonderful players there. So it's not only get the result, but to get the performance we certainly got against them. It allowed the players to play that first game against Shabab and then the second game against Air Force with a, a really clearer idea as to the qualities of the players they would come up against. Because when you go, again, you go into the unknown, it can be scary, it can be exciting, mm. but we tried to expose them to as much as we could prior to going in. So when we did face that, I've done it with the New Zealand teams before when we've gone to the World Cup. Um, and New Zealand are often seen as the smaller nation or the underdogs when you go to those major events. And very often, um, when you speak to the playing group, it's only on reflection, whether it's at halftime or it's after the first game or maybe the second. They actually realise that they're more than capable when yeah. they're competing against other nations. And I think sometimes you can spend a lot... You can, for me, you get two focuses. You can either spend a long time really looking at the opposition and talking about the opposition and how are you going to stop the opposition, you know, and I've never been that way as a coach. For me, it's always been about what do we have and what can we do? And let's spend the time looking at what we want to do and how we want to do it. And that was the, the one thing going into that group after those two friendlies. But the players, the, you could see you could see from the playing group that they had a much clearer idea as to what they wanted to or what they were about to go into. Des, you know, we, we, we've always had this conversation whenever we're talking about uh, Indian teams competing at the Asian stage or at a stage where the competition is much higher and the experience is a lot more. Um, is that, do you sort of, whatever you do back home in India, do you let go of it and then chase the result? Chase the result means you just set all your numbers at the back and you make sure you don't get an embarrassing result because that's what we've seen with most Indian teams when they go out to play. How did you set up? Because um, you also had the advantage of four foreigners. Um, with you. So you had four experienced guys who played at that level, who had that composure that you want at the Asian level. Uh, was it you having to say, I'll have to let go of these kind of things that I was doing in the ISL? Or do I say I still continue playing the way I am, even if I'm playing a Shabab or a Jaira or an Air Force at the ACL level? I said to the group before we were, before we left, and again, I, I continued to say it throughout, if they didn't know me as a coach by then, uh, I'd be quite concerned. My approach as a coach is I want to go out and I want to play I want to play football and I want to go and attack teams. And for me, that doesn't matter whether it's at ISL level or it's at Champions League level. I didn't want to go to that event with six opportunities and try not to lose games. I wanted to go and try and show what we could do because we spent seven or eight months together. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of what these players are capable of doing. Once we, when we get it right, uh, we can get it very right. But... At the same time, when you go and play against a level of competition, you'd be naive to, to think that you can go. I mean, we, we give you an example. In the ISL, we would average, I think, just over 60, 65% possession. 
we knew going into the Champions League that that wasn't going to be a possibility um, for, for various reasons. So we knew we were going to have to adapt our game style, um, but without coming away from the principles of what we, we held true to, to me as a coach and us as a club. You know, we still wanted to put a framework around these players to go out and play attacking football, to go out and show that they can play through a press, play over a press, play around the press. And to showcase themselves individually as well, because it's a wonderful stage, not only to showcase um, what they're capable of, but showcase what players from India can do on that stage. So if you've only got six opportunities, why not go and, and, and do that rather than sit back? Yeah, I, got to, I agree with that. I mean, I was uh, lucky enough to be in Goa uh, when, uh, the, when they were playing their group stage uh, games last time round, and, and it was super to see. I think... In many ways, uh, club football that's the Indian clubs going and playing in Asia are uh, far better in, in a sense, more enjoyable representation of what's happening in Indian football than the national team manages uh, to do, at least the men's national team uh, in many ways. Uh, How has it been in terms of working with Mumbai City and like kind of, because you're coming in at a time when it's a young league, it's a growing league, um, a new club, of course. So you're building also a connect with the fans at the same time you're trying to build a community in that sense uh, but you're also trying to build a, a both footballing capacities as well as a style and and an identity so so how is that kind of uh, coming along as a project yeah it'd be far easier when we're able, when we're able to actually get to mumbai you know we've spent, <laughs> spent eight months in goa so i'm really looking forward to next season and and actually being based in mumbai and having the the fans that we obviously have in our stadium, but also getting across, getting to other stadiums and seeing the fans there. Because like you've just said, when we were away in Saudi Arabia, we the, the, the support that we felt we had from the whole of India, uh, both across, you know, people sending messages. We had people in the stadium that have traveled from, from Holland. We had people that traveled from India, our own supporting base. But we also have fans in the stadium with, uh, from, uh, wearing Kerala Blaster shirts as well. So they were there to support us as an Indian team rather than obviously Kerala. But to have that groundswell of support to represent, you know, the only club but represent India, that was that was really special, you know, and that 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 showed that was that was very nice. So in terms of our project, it's you know, it's always brought in to try and take on the work that Sergio had done before. So that's just now redefining the playing style. Um, making sure that the way we want to play, we have the players to be able to play the way that we certainly want to go out and try and play. Uh, and then it's, yeah, like you said, trying to build now from top not top down, but from bottom up. Because if we can get the foundations right from bottom up, it doesn't matter what happens at the top, because even if there's change at the top, everything stays very solid underneath. And that, for me, has been key in the last 15 years, whether it be youth development or uh, if you want to develop um, an identity, a develop a playing style, develop players, staff. If you can get the foundations as to your identity, who you are and how you operate really solid below, regardless of what happens at the top, that doesn't all fall over when the top person, whether in this case, maybe a head coach leaves, that foundation yeah. is still there. And then the, then the club or whoever makes the decisions on um, how to take the next step forwards, you've already got a very clear identity on who you are. So you can recruit the person that fits your style rather than that person coming in and changing everything again. So mm. I'm hopeful that we can start putting that in place once we get back to Mumbai. Um, but uh, until that time, it's, we're, we've tried to do as much as we can uh, whilst facing the bio bubbling goal. Is that is that the identity basically then? So, you know, City Football Group, um, you've got various clubs all over the world. Um, you've, of course, got Manchester City, which is playing that style of football. And what a game that was last night um, in the Champions League, in respect to the result. Um, but is that sort of the end game, Des? Um, maybe not play a, a Manchester City style of football, where you're dominating possession, you're controlling the game for large parts of the game, but sort of be there and thereabouts eventually. And that is the way every club under the City Football Group banner supposedly plays, because it's easy to then shift players here and there if you want to go take a player to somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, I can only speak of my experiences. So I, I was obviously in the CFG group in Melbourne. Um, so to move from one club into then Mumbai, um, it, it hopefully helps that that building of of a playing style and identity. But the one thing you can't get caught up in is saying there is one way of doing something, you know. And it's there is one way of playing. There is because there simply isn't, you know, the culture, the the league, the length, um, 
the, the, the players' abilities, the technical capacity of, of, and tactical capacity. But what you can do is have some real clear principles and ideas around how you think the game should be played. And that's the one thing that's really exciting about um, working uh, in, for, for CFG or for Mumbai. Um, because they they believe in in playing the game a certain way, which for me is perfect because it fits my philosophy, which is a very attacking brand of football, which really allows the players to showcase what they can do. So, so if if I, if I look back at the ISL test, um, you know, team hadn't changed as much as the team prior to the last season. Um, a few changes here and there. Uh, what happened in the ISL? Because um, you there, there were phases in the league when you guys were looking unbeatable. Um, mm. No one was coming close to you, and then suddenly came a dip, and then probably the recovery didn't happen, and you know so it finished the way it did. Uh, from where you were, how did you analyze what happened in the league? Yeah, I think we're still reviewing. We're still reviewing parts of that. Um, I, I said at the start of the season, and I said all the way through the season, it was a very different group or playing group that obviously done the double from the year before. We lost. We lost a very experienced goalkeeper. We lost a very experienced centre back. Um, we lost uh, almost to ATK, Lafondra, uh, Bart, who have gone on to have a fantastic season. So, when you lose five of your starting players from the season before, you don't just lose the quality that they have. You lose the experience that they also possess. And um, although <clears throat> we also replace them with some wonderful players, but when you replace a, a core group of players like that, it can take some time to to get it right. And when you add that to a full staff change as well. We got off to a really wonderful start. I think the 3-0 we started off against Goa and then we won five out of these first six games. And we really showed what we the style of football and the way we wanted to play. Um, we then lost, unfortunately, we lost Roland Borges on top of that for the season. So it was another player that we, 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 we missed from the group. Um, and then, yeah, like you said, we, we had a couple of games where I think the first couple were, were draws and we, we should have won and we couldn't quite get it over the line. And then when you're in a bubble, and I think when things aren't going your way and you're in a dip, it, it can become quite difficult to get out of that dip. And when I look back at the, the team the year before that won the league, they went through a similar thing. It went for four or five games rather than seven. But mm -hmm. they come out, they, they start very strong, they had a little dip in the middle, and then they, they finished very strong. So I think all those things, whether it be a change of planning group, obviously change of staff, um, Losing key players at important times for us. Uh, yeah, they're all learnings that we'll take into next year um, and make sure that we've got those those right. Um, because, like I said, we're look, looking forward to getting back into Mumbai and being able to, to really do some work. Uh, are you following up on it or should I ask a question? No, no, please, please. I wanted to uh, sort of uh, come back to this idea of. Uh, being a coach in a bubble desk and and how that's that's worked out obviously the last couple of seasons uh, have have gone this way uh, what, what are the pluses and minuses from from your point of view i mean there's a, there, there are of course advantages to having the whole group together in one place as well uh, how how's that worked out uh, it was a very unique experience i'll tell you that it was um <laughs> It, the, the positives for me were the amount of time you got to spend to spend with your staff and spend with your players. Because when I've come in, we, we've we've put together, okay, so we've got a way we want to play. Of the way we want to play, we've got player profiles that we, we assess our players against and we recruit from as well. Um, and falling away from that, we, have, we build a, a development plan for each player based around that. So when you're building the development plan for each of those players and having the time that we certainly had, not only on the pitch, but... We had 24 hours a day together. Only two of those would have been on the field. So you get another, you get as much time with the players as you would ever want. And from a coaching point of view, that can be a fantastic tool if used in the right way. Because you know, I think players obviously want to play firstly, but players also want to try and develop and, and spend time working out how to develop. Um, so that was a real positive for us, the amount of time we spent working with individual players to try and really enhance their development. But then on the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the other side, it's tough because you don't see friends, you don't see family. You know, we had yeah. speaking person, we had personally speaking. I had family members pass away during the season. I couldn't get back for the funerals, um, and you you miss that side of, of things. And it's almost a. I said at one point we could have been anywhere. We could have been in Goa. We could have been. We could have been in a different country because all we ended up seeing was our complex where we stayed, which was a really nice place. But we'd get in the car, or the players would get on a bus. 
we'd drive out the complex, drive to the training ground, which was fenced off. Um, we'd train, we'd get back on the bus, back to the hotel. So it was, you know, we were very well looked after, so I can't complain in that, in that space. But when you don't have the luxury of sometimes, you know, you have good days, you have bad days, but you can go home, yeah. you can, you can, your mind can shift to something else. There wasn't always that ability to do that when you're in such a confined space together for such a long time. Did you, did you, uh, so, so did you, did you uh, see something new? And I'm not saying a particular player or a team or anything. I'm saying you've been around teams. So you've been seeing football players for a long time now. Uh, given that they've come into a very different environment in these last two years or the last year when they were with you, did you notice something about a football player that you probably haven't before? Or, or just a human being or an athlete who's performing at the highest level? That's a good question. Um, not, 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 not something that jumps out at me to give you an answer to. I think the, the one thing that the biggest one of the biggest things for me in coaching is the relationships you have with the people you work with because i think you can think you know everything but if you can't relate it to the people you work with it doesn't matter so the relationships now for me especially in the high performance area they're key you need to be able to work and understand how people operate and um having that time together in the bubble you certainly got that time to spend with those players to see what was important to them you know because everybody was different um, and everyone's got a different way of working um, so that, that that was the one thing that, again, you don't necessarily get that time in an usual club environment because people turn up for training and they go home you know, or they turn up for the game and they go home. So, um, yeah, that was that was probably the biggest noticeable thing was the amount of time you got to spend and get to know the people you worked with, staff and players. Whenever, whenever you've it, spoken... Uh, sorry, sorry, Mike. Now your turn. No, no, no. I, I was going to move... I mean, actually, one follow-up question on, on, you know, you were mentioning earlier... Uh, Kind of like working for City Football Group or Mumbai City as kind of interchangeable terms. You're part of a bigger uh, network of football clubs, uh, obviously. How how does that help in the development or or sort of seeing through some of these projects, both in terms of the resources as well as the knowledge base and the technical know-how that you can access? And, and then yeah, the other side of a desk as well. Sorry if I may, because you got say in, in a football club you got three people or four i'm just assuming now you've got the whole project so you've got four more people um you know also overlooking what's happening um, watching. You got more eyes yeah you got more eyes you got more opinions um in that sense does that help you does that sometimes you know hold you back how does that work and how do you sort of deal with all of that yeah i, th I think it's for me uh, for where i'm uh, i'm i'm coming from and where i'm looking at as a coach uh, to have the resource that i certainly have available to me to be able to to be able to connect with all the other head coaches at the other clubs that's a not not that you connect with all of them but to have the opportunity to do that that's there which you wouldn't get if you weren't part of this network so that that's that's something the the resource that not just me as a, as a head coach but the support that we get um across the group so if there's things that I'm not sure on, I want to ask or bounce some ideas off of, there's people that I can do that with. You know, I think when you, you have your own staff group, sometimes it's nice to get other ideas outside of your group, whether you agree or you don't. But I think you, you, have, to, you have to have other people's input sometimes. And again, it's your decision. You've been employed to, to do the job you're doing. This, so you're, you have to make the final decision. But mm -hmm. um, to, to always think that you, you have the right idea, I, I'm, not down, I'm not down that road. So... It's not just the resource that I get. I can give you an example. The strength and conditioning department, the physiotherapy and the medical department, the analysis department, everybody gets the same. So they have the opportunity to connect and get support in their own areas as well. So again, it's, it's, it's there to be accessed and it's there for the support when you want it. Um, and that's been hugely useful to us uh, throughout the season. Uh, could, could you give it as, as an example if you did reach out to someone during the ISL? Because um, generally, when times aren't going well, um, you you look out for you know you look out for a third party who's probably watching it from afar and can give you a different perspective because you're too involved in this entire thing. Um, did you try reaching out to someone else and say, look, what's this is what's happening? Um, how do we get out of this? How do we sort of get back on that path which we want to be on? Yeah, I, I speak to people all the all the time, both inside the group and outside. So to give you an example, when things were going well, I was asking the same questions that I was asking when things weren't quite going so well. Because, like I said, and again, you ask, I ask people that I trust, um, and that I would, I, I take advice from people I would take criticism from, um, and that's both. It's uh, again to give you an example, um, I, I reached out to a, a guy called Christian Penny who works at High Performance Sport New Zealand, and Christian 
had supported me as a, as a coach for the last four or five years. Um, and again, that wasn't just at the start, that was in the middle, that was at the end. Uh, I utilized as many people as I could and can and still can uh, throughout the ACL. Um, because like you said, it's, if you can get some ideas or there's something that somebody may have seen that you maybe haven't, you know, I think when you throw all those ideas together, you still have to come out, come away and make the decision as to what you want to do and how you want to do it because you're the one that's judged on the outcome of it. So, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I have a wonderful staff group that I bounce ideas off of anyway. But yeah, that extra support, I think, whether it's from within or without, I want to continue to learn and I want to continue to grow and develop myself, which hopefully then enhances what we do on the field. So if that resource is there, I certainly always try to, to try and ask and find out a bit more. Uh, there's, you mentioned you mentioned earlier that New Zealand is uh, what where you call home. Uh, and it's a country where South Asians and Indians also uh, are uh, playing a part in sport at the highest level, uh, particularly team sport, whether it's hockey or uh, football or cricket. Uh, and I believe I was reading somewhere that you have worked with some of these uh, people of uh, player athletes of Indian origin. Uh, how, how do you look at, from a performance perspective, the difference in the development of uh, Indians, Indian athletes who are perhaps outside of India in places like New Zealand? versus uh, those who are here based in India? Yeah, I think they're very similar. Um, I, New Zealand, when I was doing some research for them and working there, it, yeah, New Zealand, as a, as a, um, when they go to the Olympics, they're actually they're third highest in the world in terms of medal returns per capita. So it shows that regardless of what country you're from or what the dominant sport may be, you know, in, in New Zealand it was rugby, in, in India it's obviously cricket. Yeah. But it, it, what it does show is that there are many well-tuned athletes that if given the right opportunities, um, if developed in the right way, if supported when they need support, um, and if, like I said, given, I'll go back to opportunity here, for given opportunities, there isn't a great, there isn't a great deal, especially in the younger ages that I've, I, you know, I, I've worked a long time with 16 through to 23 year olds, and I don't see too much difference at all, um, athletically, technically, tactically, from the New Zealand players to the Indian players. But what I do see is opportunities um, that some get that others may be done. So I think if, and I, I spoke about this during the ACL, if we can provide a framework that, you know, what we do is going to be different to what other clubs do. And everyone's, like I said, there's no one way of doing anything, but we've got a very clear way on what we want to do, which helps trickle down to everything else that we do. Yeah. Um, and if you can then give the players an opportunity to develop within that system, you know, you're going to produce hopefully players for yourself and staff for yourself, but you're also going to help them progress their careers. Des, what, what did you do to Changte? Um, so I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, for me, uh, when I used to see Changte at Chennaiyan, I used to be frustrated. I said, here's a boy who's got so much. Um, but the end product is just not coming. He's inconsistent. He's running, 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 but he's running like a, a bull, you know, with doesn't know where he's running. He's just running, running, running. Then uh, I didn't see much of the ISL when he played with you for Mumbai, but then I saw him playing the ASL. ACL, the boy is coming in the middle. He's asking for the ball. That's that's you know that's characteristic. He's asking for the ball in the middle. He's playing outside in the wing. Um, he's not just making his house on the wing where he used to continuously doing so. What did you talk to that boy? And where do you see that boy? Because this boy has been, um, I'll tell you, Changte is developing into a fine player. I've been hearing this for the last six, seven years. He's developing. He's coming. He's coming. But he's not breaking into the national team regularly. Um, where do you see that boy? And you suppose this could be the start of a new trajectory for him going forward. Yeah, I think he was my first signing when I come in in the January transfer window. So, um, like I said, I, I'll always go back to we've got a way that we want to play. And the reason I mention that is because we recruit players based upon the position we would like them to play. So, Chante, as an example, we brought him in as a winger. You know, so he falls into the same category as Vipin Singh and uh, Vikram Patap. So, what we are very clear with them on is if this is the role that we would like you to play within the team, this is the position. Yeah. This is what we would like you to look like. This is where we want. This is where we think you are now. This is where we would like to get you to. And these are the areas that we feel within your game that you need to work on to get you there. Um, and we've done that with all three of those players. And uh, we've got examples that we can share with them from not just Mumbai, but we've got, of what they've done in Mumbai. We've got examples from Melbourne City. We've got examples from Man City that we can show them so they can see what it looks like. And then we can track and monitor their training through footage and review it with them. So hopefully that really starts to reinforce and help them understand the role that they they can play within the team and then once they understand once they get a clear understanding of their role within the team 
they don't have to think about it too much. So it's a case they're already in the right position. They're already where they need to be or should be and where everyone's expecting them to be. Um, and because they're there, they're, hopefully there's more opportunities for them to show what they can do then because they're not having to think about being there. They can think about what they want, want to do with the ball. And, you know, to use your example with Chante, it's then, it's then the next bit. You know, it's what, what's yeah. the next bit, which is the outcome, whether it's a shot, it's an assist, or it's a continuation of the attacking move. Uh, is that for you? Is that for you? Uh, sorry, sorry, by just one thing. Is, is that for you? The, the, the if I was to say to take the Indian player to the next level, we keep on talking about technical, technical ability. But you suppose more needs to be done on their tactical ability, uh, where they need to be on the pitch, um, how they need to be positioned on the pitch for those ninety minutes and their role within the team. You suppose that is what needs a lot more development for you? I, don't, I can't. I can't speak for for Indian football. I can just speak for 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 our club. For, for the players you've coached, yeah. For the players, the players I've coached. I think if you are very clear on what you want to do, so this is what we want the team to do, and this is how we want to play, and then you can break that down into segment. You can break that down, which really helps them see how they how do they fit within that. And for for those players, some of it's technical, some of it's tactical. Um, but if they've got a very clear idea as to how you want to, how, how do they fit within the greater scheme of things, we can then work backwards with them on whether it's technique, whether it's tactical, what do they need more of? Because some will need more tactical work, others will need more technical, others will need some more support. And that's where I go back to the bio bubble, the time we were able to spend with those players. Because we, got, because we know where we want to go with them and because we know how they fit within the system, because we've recruited based upon that, it becomes a little bit easier to then to, to show how we want to develop them because we can then start to show them footage of them doing it. And that's the best one. If you can show a Chante or a Bippin or a Bikram, you know, these young players, if you can show them examples of them now doing it rather than others doing it, that's that's ideal, both on the training field and in the game. I just, yeah, uh, going off that and, and my, my final question for you guys, uh, for today. Uh, you're talking Thank about you. opportunities for players. <laughs> Uh, players to grow uh, for sure, and we talk often of what players need to grow. But but we were talking like last week to Carlos Pena, who's also a young coach. You are also a young coach. Uh, we have several uh, in our also milieu, uh, whether it's Indian coaches or guys coming in. Uh, so obviously, from a personal perspective, from a professional perspective, you have ambitions. You have places you want to go, things you want to do as a as a coach in the sport. Uh, how do you look at uh, the league where it's currently at and the kind of opportunities you need to develop to your uh, sort of fullest potential as a coach? Uh, especially in terms of the, the number of, like we, we're talking about tactical uh, stuff. A lot of it comes from getting game time actually, right? When, like you were saying, when, when they see what they are able to do, execute the plan on the pitch. So how do you see that going forward, let's say over a five-year period? Yeah, so for me, this is my 20th season of coaching. So although I'm still young, I'm still young. I started, started when I was 17. So it's, I've been fortunate to work full time now for 18 years in the game. So that, that's hopefully put me in a good space and, and allowed me to get to, to where I am now. And that's been, that's been a lot of hard work. It's been a lot of sacrifice and it's been a lot of opportunities that um, people have, have given to me. Uh, and I've been fortunate to work under some wonderful people that have helped me get to where I am. Um, so yes, I have ambition, but I'm, um, I think if you look too far forwards, you lose sight of where you are right now. You have to do a good job in the job that you're in. And if, mm -hmm. if that happens, then then great. Because uh, yeah, you look too far forwards, you, it's never a good thing in football. Mm -hmm. So for, for, for me, that's, you know, that's the most important thing now is to make sure that we do as well as we can with Mumbai. Uh, and the second is the reason I come to Mumbai, or part of the reason for coming to Mumbai, one was to experience a different culture and different league. But I see so many similarities with where the A-League maybe was you know, the A-League yeah. is now in its 17th or 18th season, whereas the ISL has just finished its seventh. So, you know, with that with that um, development, of it, yes, it's still, for me, it's it's obviously the top, top competition in the country. Uh, but it's it's given opportunities to players to train full-time, to play, at the moment, 20 games, hopefully more, you know, whether it's cup competitions or hopefully league games as well. Yeah. Um, and it's an exciting time to actually be involved because... It, it, you can see what people are now trying to do. You can see teams rather than maybe where it was two or three months a couple of years ago. Mm. We've just come up. We've just come off the back of what is an eight-month season for us. So we started in October. We finished at the end of April, start of May. Mm. So I think that will continue to expand, and we'll get nearly to a nine-month, maybe ten-month season. 
Yeah. Um, and that, I don't, I don't think that's far away. So that was a, an exciting reason for coming here because I could see the potential of the league. I certainly see the potential of the players within the league. Um, and it was one that I felt was the right fit to, to come over. I have, I have two final questions. Uh, one is on the Indian player. Um, when, when we're talking about tactical evolution or you know information that you're passing on to the Indian player, um, do you have to be careful as someone who's of course been around world football a lot more, who's had a lot more information, has had you know. Uh, you know, you've, you've seen a lot of other things. So when you're passing on information to your Indian player, uh, do you have to be mindful of the fact that I can't sort of bombard him with information? I have to keep it extremely simple so that the boy is interested in what I'm, you know, trying to teach him, which is for his own good and the team eventually. Yeah, I think there's a few things there. I think the, the, the simplicity of coaching is the most important. So don't complicate something that doesn't need complicating. You don't need to use fancy language if it's... Uh, the simpler, the better. I had a wonderful conversation with a player about three years ago where he'd spent a week in our environment. And I said to him, I said, how are you finding things? And he oh. said, yeah, it's real, real simple, real easy. And then he apologized for saying real simple, real easy. But it was the best <laughs> thing. It's the best thing he could have said, because although we'd covered, we'd covered off everything we wanted, but the way he'd, he'd got that was, was, was great. But in terms of, you know, obviously English speaking, coming into a different country, for me to make use of the staff that I have as well. So that's where I've got Tony Fernandez, the assistant coach, and obviously the medical staff. We, I, have to, I have to run things past them to make sure as well that I'm, I'm, I'm speaking maybe a little bit slower at times, um, or I will involve them to try and help me get messages across to make sure that the players, firstly, hopefully understand it, but secondly, get the opportunity to, to ask questions back because I don't want it to just be one way. You want to check their learning because in their development, you know, we might be trying to, we might be trying to get them from say here to here, and there may be five point parts to, to that. They may already know. They may already know one, two, four, and five. It's number three that they might be missing to get the link to, to click. So it's about for me. It's about the simplicity of messages or simplicity of message. But what what is it they actually need? And it might just be that one bit rather than the whole the whole part. So so yeah, I don't know if that quite answers your question. But. No, I've understood. You you've got to identify what basically helps them moving yeah. forward and then yeah. uh, help them moving forward. I, my, my final question, Des, is this that, uh, and uh, for all the fans, Mumbai fans who will probably be watching this, um, they won't leave us if we don't ask you this question. Uh, plans for next season? And can we expect wholesale changes or new players coming in uh, for the coming season? Yeah, we, we will report back on the 28th of July. Um, so we, maybe, a little, maybe a little bit sooner. So that's what the players have been told. So everyone will be back into Mumbai on the 28th, the latest. Um, there, will be, there will be some change uh, in, in the club in terms of player personnel. We've got some players coming off of contract. Um, obviously, with some uh, changes that need to be made there. But like I said, now we're, we're very clear on what we've, what we've done already this year. We've shown what we're capable of doing, both in the Champions League. And um, I think that's exciting because, you know, for us now going into next season, it's, it sets us up very well because, you know, we want to go and challenge. We want to go. We want to go and challenge for the league. We want to go and challenge for, in the finals as well. So, you know, we we've tried to show a way that we work, which for me is is that exciting attacking brand of football. Um, and yeah, I'm looking forward to next season. So yes, there will be some change, um, but it'll be very good change and it'll allow us to play our game a lot more consistently. Perfect. Uh, Any, you got anything else, mate? No. Done. Des, thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, we wish you all the very best for the coming season and hopefully we'll be able to chat with you once you're in Mumbai um, in person. I think, yeah. Have okay. Another conversation. We can, we can see you down there at, at some point and, and see, see maybe spend some time watching you at work as well if, if that works out. That'd be great. Yeah. No, absolute pleasure to speak to you. And yeah, please, if you're, if you're in Mumbai and you want to come down anytime, just just let me know. Not a problem. Training all games, okay. whatever, you, whatever you want. But Perfect, Des. We'll, 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 take out, we'll take out a recording of this clip and we'll send it to Anuj uh, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> no we'll say, no. okay, we're coming. <laughs> no, all good. Thank you so much, Des. Thank, Thank you so much for your time. Good to meet you, Des. Pleasure. Thank Thanks, you. guys. See you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.